Thank you. My name is Tony Churumov, founder of Obite. I'll talk about uh, using directed acyclic graph, DAG, for building distributed ledgers. Uh, perhaps you have already heard about uh, DAG. Most likely it was praised as a solution to blockchain's uh, scalability problems. But I will not talk about scalability. I'll talk about things that makes crypto different from what was before crypto, about decentralization, disintermediation, and censorship resistant. And I'll show that DAG is more disintermediated, more censorship resistant than blockchain. In blockchains, uh, you as a user do not have direct access to, to, to the ledger. When you want to add a transaction to the ledger, you have to go through the miners. It is the miners, block producers, who decide uh, if your transaction will be included into the next block. It is the miners who have uh, exclusive access to blocks and have the power to decide if your transaction is accepted or not. Miners are serve as a middleman. They are middlemen that stand between you and the ledger. And uh, in practice, there is usually a small number of block producers, uh, miners or mining pools that collectively control more than half of the total mining power. For example, in Bitcoin, there are only four four mining pools that control more than half, and in Ethereum only two. Should they collude, they could block any transaction from entering the blocks. Over years, many blockchain designs have been proposed that vary in how block producers are selected, but still block producers serve as gatekeepers and every transaction has to pass through through the gatekeepers, through the miners. And if miners do not accept your transaction, it doesn't exist in the ledger. So it is a problem that is inevitable in blockchains. And in order to solve it, rather than inventing another, uh, another way of selecting block producers, we have to radically change the design and eliminate uh, blocks and block producers completely. And instead of connecting blocks, we connect transactions directly by having each, each, trans each transaction include a, a hash of the previous transaction, one or more previous transactions. And uh, as a result, we get a structure that is known in mathematics as directed acyclic graph DAG. Now, access to the ledger is completely direct, disintermediated. When you want to add a transaction to the ledger, you just add it. Select a few parents, parent transactions, add your own data, sign, broadcast to peers, done. There is nobody who could stop you from doing so, and the transaction is already in the ledger. It is the most decentralized, most disintermediated, and most, most censorship resistant way of adding transactions into a ledger. Uh, you can think of DAG as uh, the third stage of the evolution of ledgers. First, there were centralized ledgers where there was only a single gatekeeper. Then came blockchains where we have uh, a few gatekeepers who accept transactions into the ledger. And finally, in DAG, there are no gatekeepers at all. Users just add their transactions directly to the ledger without asking anybody for permission. Now, with so much freedom, it should not be chaos. All nodes on the network should still agree about the state of the ledger. And the agreement or consensus generally means agreement about two things. What happened and in what order. The first part is easy. In DAG, every transaction that was posted by anybody, that was added to the ledger by anybody, it exists. It happened. It can reach different 
nodes at different moments in time, but still it will reach all nodes and all nodes will eventually know that this transaction did happen. If it were a blockchain, block producers would decide what happened. Whatever a block producer decided to include into his block did happen. What he didn't include didn't happen. Uh, block producers also decide about the order of transactions. They are allowed to order them within a block as they like. Now, how do we order transactions in a, in a DAG? Uh, since just because it is a DAG, there is already a lot of order. Every transaction references, references one or more parents. Parents, in turn, reference their own parents. And if we can reach one transaction from the other by following parent-child links, we already know the order between those two transactions. Uh, the order between transactions doesn't directly follow from the structure, from the shape of the DAG. If, if the two transactions lie on, on parallel branches of the DAG. And in order to, reserve, uh, to resolve this ambiguity, we rely on so-called order providers. We also call them witnesses. Uh, order providers are regu just regular users who are supposed to post their transactions frequently enough and strictly in order. That means that their previous transaction is reachable from their next transaction through parent-child links. And we, we have to trust them to follow this rule, to, not, to, to never break it. And in order to rationally trust them to do so, we require them to be individuals or organizations with known identities and to have something to lose in case they misbehave, such as reputation uh, or a, a business that is based on trust. Uh, order providers are selected by users. Every user just indicates the list of uh, order providers he trusts in every transaction that he posts. And uh, uh, the list includes uh, 12 positions. Uh, it is the number 12 is small enough so that users can realistically know all 12. And the number is large enough so that the system survives a random failures of a minority of uh, order providers. Um, and the list of order providers can vary bit from user to user, from transaction to transaction, but uh, they should differ by no more than one position for neighboring transactions. Now that we have order providers, we can highlight their positions on the DAG and order all other transactions around the order created by order providers. It is possible to create such an algorithm. However, the order is not established immediately. We have to wait for some time until enough order provider transactions are posted on the DAG uh, in order to be certain about the order of the past transactions. And since the order is determined solely based on the positions of the order provider transactions on the deck, and all nodes will eventually receive all transactions, uh, we know that all nodes will receive all transactions, including order provider transactions, and will arrive at the same order of events. So now we agree about have an agreement about what happened, every data transactions that transaction that was posted, it did happen, and we have an agreement about the order of events, it either uh, follows from the shape of the deck or is determined by looking at the uh, order provided transactions. Uh, this is the type of a consensus we have in Orbit, and Although the admission of transactions into the ledger is totally decentralized, uh, order provision in Obyte is currently still centralized since uh, 10 out of 12 order providers are still controlled by the founder, that is me, 
and only two are independent. And we are looking for candidates willing to serve uh, as order providers and help us uh, decentralize order provision. And I'm happy to say that uh, the University of Nicosia is currently setting up the order provider node and will be uh, a candidate for order provider. Uh, now, how do we resolve double spans? We agree that uh, if there are two transactions trying to spend the same coin, the same output, the one that came earlier on the consensus order is accepted, the other one is invalidated. Uh, the order between those two double spans is immediately obvious when there is a partial order between those two transactions. In this case, everyone just rejects the double spend attempt. If uh, there is no partial order between do the two double spans, uh, the order between them is not immediately obvious, and the protocol prescribes to accept both and wait until the order is established with the help of the order providers. Then the earlier one wins, and the, the later one, uh, the later double spend, is invalidated. Although invalidated, the failed double spend still stays on the ledger because it is already connected to a number of other transactions that didn't break any rules, that di didn't know that this transaction would become a double spend, and orphaning those innocent transactions would break our fundamental rule that every valid transaction is accepted. And this, again, is a very important rule that makes the whole system strongly censorship resistant. Because uh, assume that the majority or even all order providers collude to censor a specific transaction. They could, of course, refuse to refuse to accept this transaction as parent in their own transaction, but it can still, can still be included through other uh, transactions that do not participate in censorship. And once uh, the unwelcome transaction is posted into the deck, it, it quickly acquires uh, children, grandchildren, and so on, and the number grows like snowball, and all those transactions have to be censored too in order to censor just a single uh, transaction. And essentially, the conspirators have to sabotage the entire, the entire network in order to censor just a single transaction. To conclude, DAG stays censor censorship resistant even when order providers collude and is therefore more censorship resistant than a blockchain which fails in similar conditions. And this follows from the main property of DAG that, the, that admission into the ledger is totally disintermediated and irreversible. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tony. I think we have quest uh, time for one question. Does anybody have any questions? So you mentioned in some cases you, you cannot decide already which of the transactions are okay in case of a double spend, and you said that um, it takes some time until the uh, until you figure out which order actually, well, which one to pick. Um, you don't have blocks, so you don't have any measure of time in the deck, I think? Uh, correct. There is no measure of time. So how, how, f how do you figure out how long to wait until you can make a decision? Is this an, an obvious thing that, okay, now I can figure it out, and how long is this? Is this a random number, or is this like? It is not measured in time. It is uh, determined by looking at the shape of the deck, because we have order providers, and order providers are supposed to post their transactions only in order. And once enough uh, order provider transactions are posted after this uh, double spend, we can conclude for sure that uh, it cannot change, the order cannot change. Okay. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, thank you, Tony. Thank you.